cars are on the circuit. This is round eight. The Shell Championship Series race, one of three today. Seaton and Tanda on the front row. Greg Murphy and Neil Crompton on row two. Scape and Lowndes, the Red Barons on the third row of the grid. Stephen Richards in the second of the Kmart Racing Commodores alongside Todd Kelly on row four. Out of row five, Jason Bark won and the big winner here last year. Not so strong in qualifying this time around. John Bow alongside Russell Engel. Paul Radisson struggling a bit with the Shell Falcon and broken plenty of spoilers this weekend. Mark Largham had a broken diff in qualifying. Didn't get to put in a quick time. That's put him right down the bottom of the grid. Stephen Ellery there starting out of 16. At the back, McLean and Rodney Forbes on the ninth row of the grid. Craig Baird and Tony Longhurst, the Stone Brothers racing team, are struggling, and that is very uncharacteristic. McConville and Wheel on row 11, Jones and Stephen Johnson, row 12. Dougal McDougal and Paul Morris, Paul Romano and Rod Nash making his return to the Shell Championship Series in the brand new Auto Pro Racing Commodore. Steve Reed and Trevor Ashby, the boys from Lansdale, Rick Bates and Anthony Track. Tyler Mecklen making his V8 supercar debut this weekend in the Ultra Tune TDK Commodore. So we will see how the youngster used to race a Formula Ford and see how he goes. This is John Bauer carrying our Be Clear and Simple onboard camera in the Caterpillar Ford. Just warming the car up down the Falcon Straight. I just had uh, Alan Heafy join the team as the new team manager, formerly with Gibson Motorsport and Wayne Gardner Racing. So experience coming on board there. Aussie Mail Falcon with Brad Jones carrying another of our in-car cameras. The Mitre 10 machine, Mark Larkham, as I said before, broken diff when he was on a hot lap. That put him out. He didn't even get to get onto his second set of tyres. So Larkham starting a lot further down the order than he thought. I reckon there was a front row time yesterday. Walker in-car camera, Jason Bargwana, big winner here last year. Certainly was, made a clean sweep of things, won all three races. And Bargs is hoping for a repeat performance of that here this weekend. He's down the order in qualifying terms and there's the man of the moment Glenn Seaton who sits on pole carrying our Ford Livet in-car camera what a big day it was for Seaton incredible you saw in the opener to the program how hard he was pushing that car I Ab couldn't believe that but that was so interesting wasn't it Fantastic. quite incredible anyone well, anyone doubts how hard these Ford teams are trying to win that was a pretty good in indication of the effort that's going into it Ford Livet race analysis Winton Motor Raceway, 36 starters, 17 laps the distance for the three 20-minute races, just over 50 k's, one second covering the first to 18th positions on the grid. How about that incredible Jason Bargwana, of course, cleaned up last year, pole position and three race wins, but the order at the top looks very different in 2000. Uh, the first chicane, well, chicane, the first s is going to be interesting. At least it's dry now on both sides of the circuit. So we get set for a start in round eight of the championship. A Ford and a Holden on the front row, a factory Ford. Their first pole of the year. Can Seaton make the most of it? Green light, we're away. Or the lights out, I should say. Seaton makes a good start. Tanner. The has got the better of it. Look at Murphy straight down the inside as well. Murphy gets right down the inside. Seaton gets followed up. Tanner takes the lead. Oh, Glenn Seaton, though, fights back as they come through the second part of the chicane. moment you get off line here and you really go for a swim. Glenn Seaton's in second behind Tanda. Good start by the Holden Racing Team duo to jump up from third row of the grid. Look at this party going on here. Russell Ingle and Larry Perkins and one of the Holden Racing Team cars. I think you'll find that's Craig Lowndes. Boy, I've always in fact Todd Kelly. And Mark Scaife made a great start from the third row of the grid. Oh, we've got oh, trouble here. It's one of the HRT oh. cars. Oh, it's, it's at Scaife. At Scaife. Mark Scaife oh. has spun around. Perkins is in there as well. Whoa. Oh, Rod Nash, that's the brand new Repco Commodore. Boy, he didn't get far to him. He's no. first half a lap in race since first race since Bathurst. Well, isn't it just incredible? People have been saying HRT have had such a dream oh, run. Oh, look at that. Oh, wow. Well, a dream run Mark Scape has had in 2000. He had to have a bad round somewhere. Well, here oh, it is. I don't have to bring a safety car. Oh, look at this. Gonna, I don't think it'll steer that very well, Mark. He's going to try and limp it back to the pits. He probably will be able to do it, Baz, if yeah. he just scrapes that along the road. But being told the safety car is on the circuit. The Walker safety car is, in fact, on the circuit. So Scaife endeavouring to limp back to the pits in the Holden Racing Team Commodore. He can kiss race one goodbye. Yeah, it depends what other damage it's going to do underneath. They, they've got it. Isn't that incredible? We were just talking about this yesterday, weren't we? The law of averages. Yeah. You can have a dream run in a season, but somewhere along the line you were going to have a bad round. And Mark Scaife, boy, has he copped it here this morning. Rip the front suspension out of the Holden Racing Team Commodore. Look at that. 
that's going to really, it's really going to struggle with that. If it uh, tears off the mountain, then they really are going to be in trouble. Now that's on the old start line there. And how Paul Romano has spun in these conditions, I don't know. I don't think that was supposed to go around a second time. <laughs> I was just trying to get some heat to the side. <laughs> There's easier ways of doing it. So, all sorts of drama in this opening lap. And Robbie Starr, chief mechanic and engineer on that number two Holden Racing Team Commodore. He'll already have the spanners out ready to rip into that car. He's going to have his work cut out too. A lot of damage. Larry Perkins involved in that altercation too. With that front suspension thing, Mark, is it? And look at this, right. Uh... This is the first corner. Paul Morris and Brad Jones. Look at that front spoiler on those Falcons. Boy. Former Super Touring sparring partners uh, coming to blows there again. And it looks as though Trevor Ashby... Oh, and here we go. Let's look at the up the front of the field. Oh, no, this is a bit further back in the yeah, pack. Uh, this is the same thing from a different angle. Yep, the, uh, this is the Jones-Morris incident from another angle. And let's have a look at this again from another angle. Just, yeah. Oh, good dear, mate. The same thing from a different angle. Now, look at the front spoiler on Brad yeah, Jones' car. Yeah, incredible. I, Joe, Jones has been gone and... Uh, Paul Morris is um, just dirty and back on the track. These Falcons, the design of this front spoiler, we've seen it so often. The Commodores can go for a ride over the grass and usually get away on skate, but that Falcon front spoiler is like a shovel. As soon as you get a slight bit of rough ground, look at that, it just snaps the front of it off. And it more often than not, it takes all coolers and radiators with it. They're worth two and a half thousand dollars each, and the Dick Johnson oh, Racing Team have lost four this weekend already. What out of their last two? Have a look at this. dramatic shot, can you believe it? It's our championship yeah. leader. 158 points up on Glen Seaton coming into this round. And look at the damage. Now, we're just trying to uh, find out how exactly that happened. We saw the aftermath of that incident, but I wonder what happened to Skate there, how that all, all got started, admittedly, as they came through the, the centre part of the circuit there, near Strathfield, Hampton and Repco Corner. They're all bunched up very tightly. There's Mark, he's out of the car. Now, Scafi there. Who's behind Scafi That's, that's there? Crompton, I think. Is it Crompton? It looks but like. But he looked like he was possibly nudged in by somebody else. Yeah. Jeff Gretsch, Holton Racing team manager. Larry Perkins, apparently we're hearing from the pits. He's out for the day. Oh, wow. I don't know what the damage was with the Castrol car, but Scafi shaking his head. Beth, I have got to say, that Scafi thing looks pretty terminal to me. If, if he's torn the mountain out, uh, Mark, then they're going to struggle, really. Well, Scaife's pointing to the back of the car. I think he's pointing out to his team manager where he was hit as they headed up into Penrite Corner. So, not happy, our championship leader, as you'd expect. He's defending a healthy championship. No matter what happens to Scaife this weekend, he still leaves here as championship leader. But what he doesn't want to do is have Seaton and Tander and all his pursuers close up that points gap. Yeah, they're going to eat right into that championship lead at, uh, at this stage if they have a good weekend. The likes of Tander, who is currently leading things behind the safety car, and Seaton, who sits in behind him. Tander's done an amazing job again, hasn't he? I mean, he was, he was right down the pan in the first practice, sort of 14, 15, and uh, got the thing dialed in and was right up there. Certainly did. He shot up yeah. at the very end of qualifying, didn't he? And then he got off the line like a bullet, plenty of traction, and managed to steer clear of uh, all that melee, which is... Uh, well, he's almost there, so oh, Rod Nash, <laughs> brand new Repco back Commodore there. Big stove in in the front and he got tangled up in that stop car between Perkins and Scape. Here's our pole position man, Glenn Seaton. Got the got jumped by the uh, Holden crew off the line, managed to fight back. But then that first lap tangle up at Penright Corners really turned things upside down. The Walker safety car. Lights are off. That means we'll return to full green flag racing conditions this time around. Craig Baird, we here, has also been into the pits to change a flat tyre. All that was going on. We're getting set to go racing here once again at Winton. Race one of round eight of the Shell Championship Series. Our series leader sits pit side. And he'll be watching from pit lane in this one. Mark Scaife. Tanda is away. And a handy lead already over Seaton and Crompton as they flash over the line. Defending Shell Series champion Craig Lowndes fourth, Greg Murphy fifth, Stephen Richards, his Kmart racing teammate, sits in uh, sixth position, and Jason Barguana, last year's winner in seventh. Well, 
this, will this be Gar Tander's big day? He's nearly 200 points behind our championship leader, Mark Skate. Really struggled in the opening sessions of practice. The team referred to their wet weather setup for Winton, which actually used a few principles from that setup that really gave the car a new head of steam. They jumped right up the order to be on the front row in qualifying. And Tander now is using that good setup on the Valvoline Cummins car to maximum advantage at the moment. He's opening a bit of a lead. I think Falk can miss the gear back there and uh, let uh, Ellery pass, you know, not intentionally, but uh, he slowed up so quick, he must have missed a gear. John Falk on the team Asia online machine. Started a bit further back on the grid than he would have liked, but this is at the front, the two Fords. FTR, reborn in 2000, all of a sudden they've shown a heap of speed. This is looking out the back of car five, Glenn Seaton and his teammate Neil Crompton. Now let's get a look, see if we can see any damage on the front of Crompton's car. Is that, to me, it looks like uh, the front right of Neil's car, you see there? It looks like he's got a bit of red paint on it. Yeah, I don't know, in that replay that we saw of that, it looked as though Neil may have copped a hit from behind and possibly that yeah. set off a chain reaction. We'll have to uh, well, the wait to see. Brad that. Jones has returned to the pits. So his thing was smoking from the rear, so I don't know what... Uh, he had a big off there, yeah. too. What a disappointment for the uh, the Albury driver. I mean, this is uh, his local oh, driver. Look at this! Barguana! Oh, Muscles oh, past oh, Stephen oh. Richards. Richards in a spin! Stephen Richards has spun! Well, fighting over the same bit of territory. That used to be the old Turn 1. It's now Turn 3, but still provides plenty of action. Stephen Richards and Jason Barguana fighting over the same bit of turf. We're back on board with Jason Barguana carrying one of our in-car cameras this weekend. The dominant man here last year. The word we hear from the pits from Jeff Grett this escape is a 50-50 chance of making a start for Heat 2. So severe is the damage to the front of that Commodore. Jason Barguana carrying the Walker in-car camera. And he's a man on a mission. He was dominant here last year. Had to take a back seat in qualifying, but he's confident. He's got plenty of race speed. And there's his teammate, Garth Tander. Desperate for points. He tries to haul back championship oh, leader. Mark Scape, look at this. Yeah. Is that a flat tyre? That's Barks. It's a right. damage to the... damage yeah. where he went up the inside of Richards. Yeah, it's um, be interesting to see the replay, because it looked like there was uh, quite a lot of room there. Let's have a look now. of your car alongside the B pillar, that's the centre pillar in the car. But as usual, the officials will take a look at that afterwards and uh, make their judgments there. Here's Craig Lowndes, the surviving Holden Racing Team Commodore in fourth position. Trying to find a break on these two leading Fords who are trying to chase Garth Tander. So at the moment it's Holden, Ford, Ford, Holden at the front. That's amazing. The amount of speed these guys have found this weekend, struggling, particularly in qualifying the FTR Falcons this year. But now with this new specification Bridgestone control tyre and the fact they do a fair bit of testing around here, has really helped them this weekend. The Holden Racing Team also have done a, an incredible amount of testing here at Winton and I guess at the end of qualifying were left scratching their head. They expected to be further up the order lounge, starting to reel in Neil Crompton like a magnet the back bumper of Crompton's FTR Falcon. There's Jason Barguana with that damage to the front left of his car. He's coming under pressure from both Bow and Paul Radisic, who sit in seventh and eighth position. Your leader, if you've just joined us, is Garth Tander. Glenn Seaton in second. Neil Crompton, who you see on screen here, is in third place. And Craig Lowndes, the defending Shell Series champion, hungry for points in fourth. Well, Neil almost matched his best qualifying performance yesterday. He was third fastest after the top 50% of the grid had finished their qualifying, but then out of nowhere came Greg Murphy in the slowest 50% division to take third position away from him. The Crompton has been putting in some quick lap times all week. Currently only 12th in the Shell Championship point standings. And the man behind him, Craig Lowndes, is fourth and well within striking distance. He's going to be out to try and make every point he can on his teammate to try and close the gap in the Shell Championship battle. Oh, Crompton seems a lot happier with his car when you talk to him, doesn't he? He's uh, done quite a bit of testing lately. Oh, that's it to John Bow. 
So Bow has uh, gotten down the inside of Radisic. There must have been a position swap there because the previous lap around, Bow was ahead of Radisic. Now look at this. The enforcer and Paul Radisic who started out of grid's position 11 and 12 for this one. They're at it. This is the battle for eighth position. Here's Jason Bagwana soldiering on. Looks like he's bent the front bodywork on the car, but it's not causing too much trouble for that front tyre. Right, it's just taking the edge off a bit now, and then it um, looks like it's going to be OK. Neil Compton defending hard from Craig Lowndes, our reigning Shell Series champion, as he closes right up on the back of the FDR car, and they swing through turn one and two. Good, strong, consistent performance from the FTR XR8 so far. Murphy, the best of the Kiwis. For those of you that may be watching through TV1 in New Zealand, we welcome you. Doing good things at the moment. Happy about the Kiwis victory, no doubt, and the Bledisloe Cup overnight. 39 year old Neil Crompton turns 40 this year. This is looking like his best performance in a long time. Certainly is Mark. He sits in third behind teammate Glenn Seaton. Garth Tander is your leader. Lowndes and Murphy fourth and fifth. Barguana muscled his way up to six. John Bow and Paul Radisic are also inside the top eight. Then it's Ingle Kelly, Ellery and Ford. No! Oh, it's Oh, no. There's so much water on the infield of this place. I mean, once you get in there, you've got little or no chance of getting out. Turns your car into a steaming wreck. Look at the amount of water that thing's taken on board. It's all the radiators, yeah. the exhaust system. Oh, it's oh. Longhurst, Longhurst. Yeah. Body work damage to the Caltex Havoline Ford. Maybe it came together with Ford. Yeah, it could have been as a result of that. But look at that it's tire running. That's a good wallop he's out there anyway. Whoever so let's have a look at that again, Baz. Yeah. Oh, one. Oh, oh that's right. Dear, that was a... <laughs> I think Rodney Forbes yeah, was involved yeah, in that as well. Yeah, three people involved in that. So... So John Fortman that just happened this again. I'm not sure how all that started. Yeah, you and me neither. <laughs> it all happened so quickly. Yeah, exactly. Rodney seemed to dive down the inside, and Faulkner, I think, half decided he was coming with him. Once you get a wheel off into the wet conditions here at Winton, Lara Passenger. Four laps remaining for our race leader, Garth Tander. These are critical points for the Valvoline Cummins driver. He's really in the thick of this championship battle. He's now 196 points behind leader Mark Scaife. But now with Scaife out of the running, no points from heat one. And as we said earlier from the pits, oh, oh Paul Wheel. Oh, well. oh, damn, man. As we said before, 50-50 chance of Scaife making the start for Heat 2. This is a very important time for his pursuers to make up lost ground. Seaton putting in some quick laps here. 125-14 from Garth Tander. A 125-12 from Seaton. They're separated by two one-hundredths of a second that time around. Battle scars here for Anthony Trask in the Toll Express. Falcon and Cameron McConville sporting some as well. Stephen Richards trying to fight his way back through the field. Here's Stephen Johnson in the second of the Dick Johnson Racing Fours. A good battle going on further back in the pack. So look at this. Oh, this oh. is... Oh! Tony Longhurst. Yeah. Yeah. Those two aren't uh, the best of yeah, friends yeah. either after Barbara Gallo. Remember these two coming to blows? Oh, there's a little sap up the rear there. Boom! Uh, yes, Barbara Gallo, they weren't exactly uh, drinking partners, no. We just hear from the pits that Ross Stone, head of Stone Brothers 4, that run the Caltex Haveline car, have told Tony Longhurst, come in and park it. There must be some problem with the car. I've got to say, Ross and Jim Stone have had a terrible season so far this year. They really haven't featured prominently in many of the results. It's left them scratching their heads too because they really believe the cars are in yeah, absolutely A1 condition at the moment. So characteristic performance from the Stone Brothers Racing team who are doing their absolute best with those cars as you ride with Paul Radisic in the Shell Helix Racing Ford in front of him, Jason Barguana Radisic at the moment, the rat, if you just join us, sits in seventh position, second in terms of the battle for top Kiwi, Greg Murphy is fifth outright in this race and it looks as though the rat is closing in the latter stages of this race Neil Crompton under enormous pressure from Craig Lowndes been able to resist it so far. Hasn't put a, a foot wrong. Yeah, talking about Craig Lowndes, Mark, uh, uh, 
there's a lady that's uh, pretty poorly in bed at the moment, her name's Jenny Sager, and uh, Craig and Mark send you a big kiss and lots of love, and I uh, hope you get a uh, better pre -print. Look at Longhurst's car. Oh, boy. Flat tyre, he's got to try and limp it around to the pits now. What a terrible weekend for Ross and Jim Stone. As you say, it did kind of gave him a full sense of security when Beardy won down at Phillip Island. Everybody thought, oh, yeah, we're really going to see some stuff here, but it um, hasn't gone very good for yeah. Hasn't been a repeat of that performance, no. has there? Two laps remaining in this one. It's been a difficult season for Baird. He's learning his way around a lot of these tracks this year as well. It certainly is. Don't forget if you want to catch any of the action in terms of V8 Supercar news, results, championship points, the whole lot, go to the official V8 Supercar website, v8supercar.com.au. Now on that website there is also a link to the Channel 10 website, so you can check us out as well, all our program information. Why not click on the RPM icon or link as well? Check out Barry Schultz's beautiful face in there. is the website address. It looks like Tander is just sort of going as fast as he has to go, looking after his tyres at the moment. Because yeah. he's got a gap there. And he's oh, look at this. You've got to say, Crompton has done so well resisting the pressure here, hasn't he? Oh, no. <laughs> he's just leaning on him, you can see. He's just all over the back of this number six car. Falcons, his best performance a long time. Did a great job in qualifying yesterday. And obviously got a good start. In actual fact, it was only the last sort of five minutes that Tanner knocked him off of uh, the front row. So down toward pit straight once again. Positions remaining fairly static. It's very difficult to overtake at Winton Raceway. Unless you want to come to blows, as we've seen right throughout the field in this opening race. One lap remaining for our race leader, Garth Tander. Critical points for the Gary Rogers Motorsport team. And there's the enforcer, Russell Engel. A little bit further back in the order, currently in eighth. End of this long leading train of cars. $10,000 poorer. 20 championship <laughs> points down after that controversial altercation with Mike Emery at Queensland Raceway. I've seen so much mail. So many pit fans talking both for and against Ingalls' actions. So the enforcer really in the news at the moment. Often wondered if you could do one of those easy 24-month payment plans on a fight like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, to introduce that, meanwhile, this is a bit further down the pack. You saw Paul Morris take a big run off into the scenery. At oh, turn look one. at this. This is... Uh, there's no way to cross that's going to give this up. Bounds is painting his mobile signature <laughs> on the back of that bumper bar. kilometres remaining of Winton Raceway to bring this one home on the podium in race one. Craig Lowndes, the sole remaining apart from the Young Lions Commodore. Of course, look at this run down the inside. Has a look. <laughs> Dropped it. Dropped Driving it. right down the middle of the road. Does not give him a sniff. Look at this on the inside. Oh. Lowndes continues to attack. One corner remaining for Crompton. He's going to hold out our reigning champion. Superb effort from Garth Tanner, though. The young Western Australian Tanner takes first blood in race one at Winton. Glenn Seaton will get home second. Neil Crompton, a marvellous performance in third place, just holds out Craig Lowndes in that scintillating battle which has raged right throughout this race. Greg Murphy home in fifth position. Jason Barguana sixth. But quite incredible, Barry, when you uh, consider we had a safety car period there for a while. Tanner really launched off the line quite beautifully and, and Seaton, to his credit, after, I guess, making a... A bad start, recovered quite well. Uh, Tander is so mature these days, isn't he? I mean, he just, uh, he's so clever, he's good at getting the car sorted out, and when he gets in front, he just goes just as quick as he has to, to save the tyres, and uh, he's really good. You know, you've got to hand it to Gary Rogers. He gave a couple of young guys a good run, and um, Garth at the beginning was... Uh, bit of a problem but he's definitely got it all together now. He certainly has. We said a couple of years ago it was a big gamble giving him a go but it's paying dividends. Tander takes out race one from Glenn Seaton. Neil Crompton and Lowndes at third and fourth. A good performance from Barguana who muscled his way up to sixth. So both the Gary Rogers Motorsport team cars in the top six. Russell Ingle also working his way from outside the top ten into position eight. Further back Kelly, Ellery, Forbes and rounding out the top 16 was Craig Baird. Well, 
for Mark Scaife in championship terms. Could this be an awful turning point for him? Garth Tander was the winner in race one. A couple of other standouts for you. Glenn Seaton equals his best effort of the year with that second place. Paul Radisich from 12th to 7th. Stephen Johnson 24th to 14th. Stephen Richards 7th to 20th. And Mark Scaife, of course, going from fifth place to that unfortunate retirement in race one. Let's go down track side. Mark Osler. Well, a dramatic moment in the 2000 Shell Championship Series. Our leader, Mark Scaife, caught up in the first lap tangle. How did you interpret that situation? Well, uh, I mean, Crom Crompo gave it a fair hit right in the back corner. The left-hand front wheel, his left-hand front wheel hit my right-hand rear guard and basically just turned the car straight around. And uh, I've got to say, Mark, I haven't really got a big fit of the giggles about it because that sort of stuff changes championships. Absolutely. Championship in the balance. Now, Robbie's working flat out on the car behind us. Is the car going to be ready for race two? I reckon it's sort of 70-30. I mean, we're a big chance. We've got to put a front corner in the car, and we're a little bit lucky that it hasn't actually hurt oil and water systems and stuff. But, uh, you know, I was parked there, and the whole field were going past. Larry had nowhere to go and ended up running into it. That's how it is. Wish you all the best. Hope to see you in race two. Thanks, Marco. This is your final chance. In race two, round eight of the Shell Championship Series, Garth Tander, the man who, of course, won race one, will lead the way in terms of this race. In race two, Seaton alongside him on the front row, Compton and Lowndes on row two, Murphy and Bargs on three, Radisich and Ingle on row four. John Bow and Todd Kelly round out the top ten. Stephen Ellery and Rodney Forbes start out of row six. Cameron McLean and Stephen Johnson out of seven. Steve Reed and Craig Baird out of sixteen. For the back, Anthony Tratt and Paul Morris on row nine. Larkham well back, so too Stephen Richards, who started from position seven in race one, as you can see there. Ethan Smurton, McConville and Bates. Look at that shot, you can see Mark Scaife. He will start this race from pit lane with Mark Larkham behind him. The revs rising in the V8s, we are away. Tanner again like a slingshot. Look at Murphy to a great start. This time a much better run from Glenn Seaton, though, as they head to the S's for the first time. Who's going to give it? It's Tanner. Tanner gives way sideways. That is Barguana. Through the S's for the first time, he hangs on to it like a Barks coming in big time from Crompton. Bark one is sliding all over the place, left then right, but he managed to gather it up and hold on to it. The Valvoline Commodore stays in the battle. A great start in the FTR Falcon. I tell you what, Barwana did a good job there, didn't he? Both ways. Neil Crompton has been swallowed up off the line there. He started out of grid position three, but is now in about position six. Craig Lowndes, the big man to profit from that. So too, Greg Murphy. The field stream through here. The infield section heading towards the Stratfield hairpin. At the moment, Glenn Seaton leading the way. Could this be Ford's second or third, I should say, victory of the year in race turns? Well, they haven't run a, won a round so far in 2000. They've won one round in 98, one round in 99. And the form shown by the Holdens earlier this year, everyone thought this may have been the first season we went through without a Ford victory at all. But Glenn Seat fighting back at Winton this afternoon. Had to play second fiddle to Tander in race one, but he's got the race lead in race two. I tell you what, that thing of Seaton's is not down on horsepower. You see acceleration. Oh, what have we got? It's, uh, yeah, Craig Baird looked like he touched uh, the back of um, Radisson. Keep an eye on Mark Scaife's progress there. As you can see, the back end of the field coming through. Scaife, a miraculous effort by the Holden Racing Team in between races one and two. They have completely rebuilt that front end of the car, which was so badly damaged. He is out there and now fighting his way through the field. Seaton storms underneath our trackside camera there. That was quite an incredible, incredible job by Robbie Starr and George Smith from Denkard. Did a lot of the panel work cutting away there with his angle grinder. Oh, just on the inside goes Paul Morris with Rodney Forbes. Muscles his way up the inside and takes him. And they swing up through. I'll do Ford credit straight. But uh, I've got a hand to HRT. That was an incredible, the quick repair job, considering the amount of damage they had to do. To get Scaife back into this race, he's got a fight from the back, though. Yeah, they had to cut, um, cut part of the, the front wing off and put a new piece on it. I mean, they did, if you saw the amount of damage there, they did an incredible job. I didn't think they were going to get it done. Scaife from pit lane is now. He's on the 30th position. Look at him storming through the field beside Tony Long, who's, Longhurst, rather, who's also on the recovery after his problems in race one. With a tiny big turnaround, Longhurst. And that's Brad Jones there is with him as well. Boy, oh boy, Longhurst is in the wars at Winton. Oh, he's going to want to forget this weekend, isn't he? Oh, it's incredible, isn't it? Oh, I'm going to get the big stuck. So, Longhurst goes to the back of the field. Been a terrible weekend so far for the veteran.
most experienced driver in the Shell Championship oh, Series. Look, look at the smoke coming out of uh, Seaton's thing. He's got to get a bit of fuel going through that thing. Yeah. Okay. Reaching it up. Maximum horsepower for the FTR Falcon. Putting it to good use here, but he's got his mirrors full of the Valvoline Cummins Commodore. Garth Tander and Craig Lowndes, our defending Shell Series champion, trying to fight back in this championship. He needs every point he can get, and he's really starting to hustle in the back of Tander's car. Drove an incredible race in the first one of the day. Craig Lowndes right on Neil Crompton's bumper for the entire duration of it. He put a mark on it, Lowndes. But this is his desperate bid for points now, the defending champion. Look at these three guys. They are so in need of points. Seaton second in the championship, Tander third, and Lowndes fourth in the series coming into this round. Mark Scaife. Scaife. Yeah, continuing his charge from the back. He's up to 25th after starting right from pit lane before the... Had to wait for the whole field to get away before he was given the green light to go. There he is, up behind Chris Smirton, down the inside as they dive into pit right turn. Oh, Tyler Mecklen, Formula 4 driver, making his V8 supercar debut this weekend in the Ultratune TDK car, but he's taken a wild ride off into the scenery. Let's see if he can get out. Very difficult. There is uh, oh, so much slippery. water on this infield at Winton. Oh, I think he's bogged. Yep. That is uh, on the entry to the Ford Credit Sweeper. So, wonder mm. what the officials will say about that, whether it's parked. Might see a safety car out there. We'll keep an eye on that. Meanwhile, the race continues. Seaton defending hard from Tanda. Lowndes, bit of a gap. Back to Greg Murphy in the Kmart Commodore. There he is just coming into view. Barkwana, Radisic, Engel and Crompton now back to eighth. Got swallowed up at the start there. Bow and Ellery rounding out the top ten. So, Seaton looking to try and, I guess, emulate what happened to Craig Baird in race two at Phillip Island and Paul Radisic in race two at Eastern Creek. Could this be FTR's first victory of the year? There is Tyler Mecklen's TDK Ultra Tune Commodore parked just off to the edge of the circuit there on the entry to the Ford Credit Sweeper. Now we are being told the safety car has been brought out because of that, so the field will bunch up in behind them. So there is... Seaton, who leads the way. Let's have a closer look at this. This is, I would say... Oh, it's just looks like he unsteered straight off, and that was it. Didn't look like he'd come together with anybody, and uh, once you get any undergrowth here, it's about three feet deep in water. Just goes to show what Mark was talking about before the difference between the Holden under tray. Admittedly, that's a VS yeah. versus the Ford. The Ford in situations like that tends to act like a shovel and it's so brittle and it breaks so easily. And they're not cheap, those things, two and a half grand's worth. It's so. oh, ridiculous, isn't it? It's, uh, I have to say that um, if they were to make the make a rule that the under tray would have to be five inches off the ground at the front with both cars, uh, both the Ford and the Holden, Larry, what do you reckon? Do you think that would save people a few bob? Well, yeah, but then you've got to have a bit of downforce for a high speed, these cars do. It's really the design of these uh, under trays. The Holden ones don't break, and uh, it's just the way you chose to design them. For those folks who may have just joined us, Larry Perkins joining us for some special guest comments during the course of this race. Larry, you might like to let the folks at home know why you're not, uh, not out there on the circuit. Yeah, I, I had a bit to do with why Mark Scaife's at the back of the grid. Uh, no, I came around the corner and he was spun backwards in the truck uh, track and uh, I've had a head-on collision with an overlap of about a foot and uh, it's pulled his front wheel off and pulled my front wheel off and uh, or nearly off and uh, they've, yeah, they've got theirs to, together and uh, we put ours away. It's one of those things, I guess, a, uh, not, not a nice way to end your day. Russell, though, at the moment, uh, seventh position and not looking too bad. Well, it's, uh, he'd prefer to be up further than that. He was uh, you know, saying that he hasn't got the traction out of the slow corners that he wants uh, and has had, so it's his own uh, little problem. But, you know, still a few laps to go, and uh, if he can get on there, he might make up a bit of uh, one or two spots. A lot of the drivers have been talking about how wet this infield is, and some of them have possibly been getting their, their wheels off to the, the inside of the circuit and dragging some water onto the track. Has that made it difficult for a driver? Well, in the qualifying yesterday, we had a bit of foul play going on where, indeed, some guys I think, could only have been deliberately pulling the water water onto the track so I've uh, messed up the guy behind you and uh, you know um, that sometimes happens but unfortunately not you know not too often but look it's so wet here it's like a you know paddy field uh, somewhere rice paddy field it's sh 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 shocking out there maybe Winton will get some rice fields going here. Guys yeah, 
saw the aerial shot, Larry, where um, Scafi and Seaton went off yesterday. They, somebody's pulled some more water on the uh, on that uh, fast left-hand king. Yeah, that's right. That king's about 180 kilometres an hour, and when it's uh, wet, it pulls about 40 kilometres an hour off. So when you come across a wet patch, uh, you've got no option but to have a big uh, slide off and spin out in the hill. Lights out on the safety car, folks. We're set to go racing again, and we're away. Glenn Seaton leading the field, a Ford out in front. Garth Tander now throwing out a challenge as they head towards the S's. And Lowndes in tow in third place, Greg Murphy there. And so too Jason Barguana in the second of the Valvoline Cummins Commodores. They sweep underneath the old start line, if you like, or across the old start line. I guess for, for Glenn, he's now playing defensive, Larry. I mean, where, where are places that Tander or Lowndes might try and pass here? Well, the best thing Glenn can do is take the racing line because that's still the fastest and then no one will ever catch him. But if he chooses to start being defensive, I think it'll be his downfall because Tander's are right on him up there. Uh, you know, uh, Glenn's got to race for hard and fast and just hope that's good enough. Ford Livett in car camera doesn't get any closer than that. Almost coming right into your living room was Garth Tander. You can see that Glenn Seaton working away inside the Falcon. Just to get tremendous traction out of some of the corners. <laughs> Look at the fuel that it got going through that thing, Larry. A black smoke got out of that. Yeah, I think uh, they might uh, go revisit the uh, engine uh, tuning uh, department when they get home. But you don't need all that black smoke these days. Well, not harming Seaton's progress at the moment. Last lap around. It's of course behind the safety car, but he has been turning some very quick times, and the car seems to really rock it out of the corners. Look at Seaton muscling. The FTR Falcon around the wind circuit. There, Paul Radisic as well getting a, a back left out onto the exit of the Ripple Strip, which is a, a little bit precarious, a bit dangerous possibly to do that. Anthony Trapp doing the same thing as well. Lap 7 of 18. Oh, we've had a spin oh, of him. That's Russell Ingles. Russell. Now that is on the exit of the S's there. And the Enforcer was in 7th place at the time. And we hear from the pits there may have been some kind of contact with Paul Radisic. So how that's how that happened or we don't know, but we've certainly seen the outcome from Russell's point of view. Paul Wheel getting sideways on the exit there as well. That's cost him Dougal McDougal through. And so too Cameron McConville. Anthony Trapp's been in a war. Boy oh boy. He had damage to the front bonnet in race one. Luckily no major suspension damage as a result of that. But he's uh, now lost that front under tray on the AU Falcon. Now, Skate, for those of you keeping an eye or wanting to know how he's progressing, now up to 21st position after starting from pit lane. I guess, Larry, if you're starting from, uh, from the back of the field, that's a, a pretty precarious job around a place like Winton. Well, it's really hard work. It's as simple as that. The track, uh, the straights aren't long enough for you to extend your legs, and, uh, you know, he's getting into the cars now that are a bit quicker than the real tail enders, and unless they're cooperative, uh, he's going to have real trouble, and, uh, you know, you, you just, it's just frustrating on these small tracks like this. See, one thing I really noticed with you, you look at Seaton, Larry, when, when he gets on the brakes, the Ford seems to dive a lot more at the front than the Holden does. Yeah, he's obviously running very soft front springs there, and that, that, that's all you're seeing, a product of uh, how soft the car is, and uh, it's working well for him right now, though. Larry Perkins, hard luck uh, on today here at uh, Winton. Let's hope uh, your fortunes turn around in the next round of the championship at Oran Park in Sydney. Well, thanks very much. Good on you, Larry Perkins joining us there. Sideline for today, but he'll be back in earnest at Oran Park. Rodney Forbes getting back past Paul Morris. So Forbes, keen to argue today. There's Craig there in the second of the Stone Brothers Racing Falcons. Well down the order. They're currently in 14th position. And Stephen Richards, who started the day in a good grid position, out of position 7, car 7. But under that spin and contact in race 1, has been trying to work his way back through the field, trying to get past Baird. Here's what's happening at the front. Seaton and Tanda. And Lowndes latched onto the back of them as well. A bit of a gap back to Greg Murphy who sits in fourth position, and Jason Barguana doing a sterling job in the second of the Valvoline Cummins Commodores. Radisic now up to sixth position, Neil Crompton back in seventh, and John Bow has clawed his way up in the Caterpillar forward to eighth position. Craig Lowndes was in third position, he has now dropped to fifth. Greg Murphy sits on the road in front of him, and we'll take a closer look at why, Barry. Yeah, it's old Lowndes on the inside of Murphy, and then Barguana gets, gets through to on the pair of them. Oh, well up. Got moved by Barnes, got a hand. And Murph, look at this. Yeah. Murph got a good run out of that corner yeah. too. Race coming out, he got in front of the Kmart machine. So Craig Lowndes now having to fight.
for every point. Fastest lap, fastest man on the track this time around, Paul Radisic in the Shell Ford at 124.57. Said just a few moments ago, but he's back there in sixth position. A bit more real estate to make up. This is the battle between Craig Lowndes and Greg Murphy for fourth position. There's our lead battle. Glenn Seaton still defending hard from the front. Jason Bagwana, Greg Murphy, and Craig Lowndes. Murphy and, and, uh, and Lowndes, of course. Don't forget, former teammates at the Holden Racing Team, 96 Bathurst winners. Just amazing how they turned that Kmart Commodore around, didn't they? I was talking to Murphy on uh, Saturday. He was going, oh, God, this is going to be a hard weekend. And all of a sudden, he comes out in the slowest 50% of qualifying and puts the car third fastest. Well, he's had a great boost of enthusiasm overnight with the Kiwis win in the... Uh, in the Blitters Light Cup, he's taking great delight yeah, all day here. Don't, don't, we know, don't we know about it? <laughs> <laughs> so that's been a bit of a boost for him. He did say yesterday in that hot lapping qualifying, which has got him third oh, fast as Ellery whoa. gathers it up. Todd Kelly sneaks up the inside. They're going to go side by side up toward the Ford Sweeper. Kelly muscling in, takes the apex, and Ellery has to concede. He did a good job of saving that. Oh, wild moment, wasn't it? He's now got Lee Geyer on board as his chief engineer, formerly with. Dick Johnson Racing, now joining another one, another of the Queensland-based Ford outfits in the Super Cheap Autos team. So, Steve's got some good experience on board. As they approach the endurance races, look at the sideways there, Todd Kelly gets trying to put the power down in the My Car Commodore. He's been working on the brakes between races, wasn't happy with the car's braking performance, it was hindering his ability to pass. It looks like they're working okay now saying recently too, Mark, that uh, in the early stages of this season, in the latter half of last year, he would talk quite regularly with Craig Lowndes and Mark Scaife about their setups and use that as a, a learning tool, if you will. Nowadays, he's, he feels like he's, he's getting the experience on board. He's starting to learn what's required to set these cars up and he feels he doesn't have to rely on them as much. So Kelly, who won race two, don't forget it, Canberra, the, G, the GNC 400. This could be the best result for Stephen Ellery, Super Chief on those team. The best they've done so far was a nine up in Darwin and currently he's running eighth on the road. Here's Mark Scape now up to 15th position and doing a great job chasing down Craig there just ahead of him in the Pertec Ford. Don't forget right here on your home of motorsport plenty of four-wheeled action set to come your way. Trackside next Sunday three to five as always check your local guides there's Nations Cup and a whole lot more there. The Shell Championship Series, of course, returns in a fortnight. The mad month of July it keeps coming at you, doesn't it? Oran Park Raceway, 3-5 to five at the end of the month. That should be a ripper. A reverse grid race in place for that one as well. The aerial shot was good, actually. You, just, you can really see how quick Scaife is going. He was making an arm and a leg over Craig Baird. There. Well, there might be some people that dislike the idea of reverse grid racing, but I think it's pretty exciting watching Scaife come storming through the field. Tremendous drive by the Shell Series points leader. He started off the back of the grid, and he's really come stalling through. Look at Craig Lowndes, though, trying to get that track position back from the Kmart Commodore. He lost two positions to Bargwana and Murphy just coming out of that corner a few laps ago. Just shows how difficult it is to pass around Winton Raceway. The car in front just holds a conservative line. There's no opportunity for Lowndes to get the nose of that car alongside. Murphy was saying yesterday after qualifying that that lap he did in the second session to get into third fastest. He said he just really drove at 11 tenths and was hanging on like a roller coaster ride. And he was surprised that he got up there to, to third quickest. He wasn't happy with the setup. He feels that the car has handled better here during the course of testing. And the Kmart Racing Team have done a fair bit of that here. And overnight, the boys have tried to work on stopping the car being so taily. It seems to be going quite well at the moment, holding out lounge. And these two are, are good mates off the track as well. Yep, give no quarter rivals on the track. Lowndes, flames belching from the exhaust as he comes right up behind Murphy in the Kmart machine. You couldn't get closer than that. Fire out of the corner, down what was the old back straight. Now Dunlop straight, they break hard. Swing onto the Falcon straight. Lowndes just has run out of options here. Scenery. Look how far in the infield they are. That must have been a pretty high speed loser on the approach to the 
forward credit sweeper. I yeah. think they may have shot off there and gone straight into the infield or possibly maybe off the Strathfield hairpin, yeah. And right in the middle of the grass there. And as we've seen, cars trying to get out of this situation. It's so boggy they here. Look at this. Struggle out of that. <laughs> they might even be stuck there. They are slick yeah. tyres. They have no tread. So of course, they've got no traction. Let's have a look at this again, Bates. Right. Okay, so it was up pin right, right corner. Curb. Down towards Strathfield hairpin and... Now these two don't forget after Darwin, yeah. this is a young <laughs> shades of Hidden Valley. Yeah, yeah exactly. Jason Bagwana, we're on board in the Valvoline Cummins Commodore. The victor here last year, three laps remaining. The race leader, Glenn Seaton, but this is the battle now between the teammates for second position. Garth Tander, just up ahead of him in car 34. And Bagwana, you saw him force his way through and Craig Lowndes made that mistake. Now he's sitting up in a top three spot. Let's check out the B clear and simple onboard telemetry with Jason Barguana. If you haven't seen this before, that's your road speed on the left of your screen, your engine revolutions on the right, brake applications in the middle, and your gear selections as well. And you can ride right along with Barguana as he tries to squeeze the ounce of performance out of this car, try and close the gap to his teammate. At the moment, he's not been able to close it enough to have a challenge. A tander. But this is a good round for Garth Tander and Glenn Seaton as they try and fight back this points deficit from championship leader Mark Skate. Bear in mind it has been a real mixed season for Barguana so far. More on the downside than the upside. The upsides when they have been there, a second place in race one of the GMC 400 and a storming drive in the second leg, if you like, of the uh, Clipsal 500 in Adelaide where he finished third in this situation right behind his teammate Garth Tander. So, Barnes at this stage looking good for a third position. But these two don't seem to be able to close the gap to Glenn Seaton. Yeah, I was going to say, you look at Seaton's time, he's consistently the quickest. Uh, Bob Warner there, just a little bit quicker than Seaton, but every lap so far, the vast majority of Seaton has been the quickest. When I spoke to him, he said that they've been really concentrating on tyre consistency with the car. Thought it might be a bit sluggish in the opening laps, but once the tyres are up to temperature and the car was in the groove, he thought it would be very, very good on tyres. He's certainly been able to open up a little bit of a gap on Garth Tander. We go on board with Seaton, working hard in the FTR Falcon. And this is a very encouraging performance. And it would be pleasing a lot of Ford fans around the country have had a pretty dry season so far. Really turning things around at Winter this afternoon. Seaton heads back toward Pit Street. Tander in pursuit. Bargwana just behind him. A little bit of a gap back to Murphy and Lowndes. And here's the battle. Radisic, Bow, Todd Kelly, the Holton Young Lions Commodore, Stephen Ellery, the Super Chief Autos Machine, and Stephen Richards storming back after a great qualifying performance to take fifth fastest. A turned around in the first race and he's been fighting his way back ever since. And this is the battle for 15th and 14th position, if you like. Mark Scaife right there chasing down Craig Baird. He got up to 15th position a couple of laps ago. They'll get the last lap board to go this time around, but he's not been able to move past Baird or Morris. Another point of interest for you as well. Oh, oh, look at this. Yeah, got the inside. Yeah. That was good. And Skate goes yeah. with him. Skate yeah. tries to, but Morris on the inside gives him racing room. Skate side by side as they head down. The end of that short little straight. Swing hard through Honda Corner. Skate picks up another position. So he's really on a charge. A fantastic job by the whole racing team, honestly, to get this car back into racing condition in such a short period of time. From the back of the grid or from pit lane, if you like, up to the 14th position, so Skate doing incredibly well. Seaton, if you've just joined us, leads the way. There he is, and on course for victory. The third race win for Ford this year, and the first for FTR. What a, a much-needed breakthrough that will be for them. Something has happened to his teammate, Neil Cronder, though. He has dropped in 20th position in this race after starting out of grid three, so I'm not sure what's happened to Cromley. But through the final set of turns, this battle rages between Lowndes Greg Murphy, and well done. You can hear the team. Oh, buddy, great drive. Seaton takes it out here at Witten Race 2. Haven't <laughs> huh. seen a smile on this man's face for a long time. <laughs> That's been a very yes, tough year. Yes yes. yes, yes, you may well say that, Glenn. Well done. Fight back by Ford. Winter Motor Raceway, the crowd show their approval. Oh, John Faulkner in trouble. That's coming on to that's coming on to pit straight. So that's cost him as well. Boy oh boy, well, an emotional win for Glenn Seaton and the Ford Tickford Racing Team. Third.
the third degree of the year for Ford, and the first for FTR, Tanner at Barguana home, second and third Barguana, the great of the three, Murphy and Lowndes, for the fifth more after this. Courtesy of his victory in the last race, Tanda, Barguana and Murphy Row 2, Lowndes and Radisic Row 3, Bow and Kelly on Row 4. Stephen Ellery and Stephen Richards will start out of 5, Rodney Forbes and Stephen Johnson in the Shell Falcon out of 12. Craig Baird and Mark Scape, what a great drive that from the back of the grid up to 14. Expect him in the top 10 by the end of this one. Paul Morris and Cameron McLean out of 16. A couple of other people to watch out for, Mark Larkham in this one. Watch Neil Compton as well, had some tyre troubles towards the end of race 2. For the back, Trevor Ashby and Rod Nash on row 12. Brad Jones and Paul Wheel and all sorts of dramas in those races. Steve Reed, John Faulkner, Chris Smurden, Dougal McDougal, John Cotter and Cameron McConville in the auto pro car getting tangled up with Russell Engel. And Engel there starting from position 33, Tyler Mecklem and Anthony Tratt at the back of the field. Tratt has been in the wars today. Mecklem making his V8 supercar debut in the TDK. Commodore, here is John Bauer carrying our Be Clear and Simple onboard camera. And the Caterpillar Ford will start from grid position seven. Green seat. Can this man bring it home? There's the point situation. Tanner and Seaton tied on 76 points for the day. So whoever wins this will take top spot on the podium. But look at the battle for third. Bargwana, Lowndes and Murphy also equal on points. Whoever wins out of those three will take the third spot on the podium. So it's a real mystery at the moment who's going to stand on that top spot at the end of today. It was a long time between drinks for Seaton. The last one, his first race win since Simmons Plains in 98. Can he repeat it in the third and final race of the day? This is round eight of the championship. Away we go. Tanner makes a great start. Seat like a lightning bolt off the line has got the line towards turn one for the first time. Barguana coming for the run. Tanner tucks into second place. So the Valvoline Cummins Commodores running second and third. Murphy in the fourth place. Oh, <laughs> Everyone holds their breath as they come through the first number of corners. They've sorted themselves out by Barguana. Oh, look at that. A bit of a tag on the back from the Kmart Commodore. The Valvoline Cummins machine has a bit of loose bodywork flapping off the back. What a shame for the Queensland-based outfit. Look at Seaton sideways on cold tyres as the field streams into Penrite right corner for the first time. This infield section now, the Stratfield hairpin. Look at Tanda coming right into your living room once again as he tried to do in the previous race. It looks like there's been a bit of a touch. Uh, you see the smoke coming there from uh, the rear left of um, Seaton's car. Well, this is the battle for top honours, as we said before this race started. Whoever wins out of these two, Tanda and Seaton take top spot on the podium this afternoon. Now look at this, Paul Rose oh, down the inside. Wheel up in the air. Cameron McLean just drops a wheel off the edge of the track, gets it back on the racing line. But all sorts of action in the opening lap of P3. Get me posted on this one. A variety of outcomes could determine who is top of the podium. At the end of the day, look at Tanner having a quick look down there. I wonder if he made some sort of adjustment to the anti-roll bars. His teammate Barguana now right there with him. So too, Greg Murphy. A trio of Commodores hounding down this sole Ford out in front. So they go Eastern Creek with Paul Radisson, wasn't it? The front of the queue. Look at this heat now coming from Tanda as he looks up the inside of Glen Barguana in there too. Murphy in fourth. And it's Radisson, Lowndes, Bow, Richards, Kelly. All the way up to Forbes in tenth. Glen Seaton defending half the front of this pack. Shell Helix replay. This is after the start, Bess. Yeah, it's uh, who's out, John Faulkner. Yeah. Not had a good day, the Victorian in the Asia Online Commodore. He rejoins the field. This is another look from up high on our cherry picker. Oh, there's a big tangle of cars yeah, in it, three or four wide there. They yeah. just, just won't go into there. That's two wide maximum. Yeah, it just slips. That's your touch with the uh, yep. seat now. That's where the smoke's coming Right from. near the pit entry road. So just giving Glenn a wake-up call. As if you know, oh, that's scary. Up the inside of Stephen Johnson. Johnson. So he's continuing his charge toward the front. Glenn Seaton, though, is leading this one. Fastest lap so far, 131.71. And the FTR Falcon up the inside oh, of Craig Baird. Baird. So Stephen Johnson getting hammered left, right and centre. Tony Long has two in the second of the state. Someone's oh, found out Stephen hey. Richards. Stephen, holy. Boy, oh boy, Glenn Sweeten's gone off too, oh, apparently. Now that no. one, that's Greg Murphy that's gone off down there. Boy, oh boy, our race.
race leader. That's Greg Murphy. So Murphy's in trouble as well. Bowers off, we're being told. This is mayhem at Winton. Oh, what's going on here? Someone now, Barquana, can you believe this? Last year's race winner. Oh, Tanner's off too. Look at the rail on the track. There must have been some oil or something dropped there. Yeah. Everyone's come off down at that corner. And Barguana, last year's race and round winner, has taken the lead. I still don't know where Seaton is. We saw him off the track. We're not quite sure where. So, all oh, hell's broken loose. wonder if Seaton has gone off down near the pit entry road there. Look at the back of Barguana's thing hanging on. Well, this really mixes up. It's doing our sums up here now with the podium positions. It's all changed. Now, Jason Barguana, beautifully positioned at the front of this pack. That puts Radisich behind him. Let's have a look at this replay. This seat, he's back on the track, but he's lost a ton of positions. According to the pits, there is in fact a wall or some slippery surface on the track that has sent all those cars spearing off. Let's have a look at this on the replay. Whoa! Well, that was coming onto pit straight. Oh, look at everybody. So, I don't know what Seaton spun it there coming onto pit straight, but a bit further down. This is a replay of that again. That's a good job by Garth Tanner there. Boy, oh boy, that could have been much worse than that. There's got to be oh, oil. There must be oil down on the track there. It's probably gone all the way down to turn one because we saw Bow and Tanner off there as well. Goodness me. Chris Smurden in trouble. That's in the same place, Mark. Yeah, there must be something dropped on the track surface there. Lounge, though, makes a move on Paul Radisic. That puts him up to second position. Radisic the third. Kelly in fourth. Forbes now moves up to fifth in the wins Commodore. Escape in sixth. Can you believe this charge by our championship leader? Scaife now takes advantage of that little altercation. He's up in the top six. Get the calculators out. Boy, oh boy. Trying to determine who's going to be on top of the podium at the end of the day. I tell you what, Barguan is not going to get this, this one up there. No he way. So badly wants to win. Well, once again, this is a battle for the top spot on the podium. Don't forget that Lowndes and Barguan are both tied for points for third. But now that Seaton and Tanner have come off, these two are battling for the overall win on the day. Barguana and Lowndes. Paul Radisic, highest place with the Fords at the moment. But a long way down in points today. Scaife is up in sixth place. say it time and time again we've seen Fords in potential race winning situations and something always seems to go wrong and Glenn Seaton there staring down the barrel of Ford's first victory in 2000 just ran it away We're certainly eager for that round win the FTR team they are pumped up here look at this great loud sideways through the S's and he chases down chases Barguan up and Barks has got the no for your eyes on this is a no surrender approach Sort of another five or six laps into it, it's going to be all over the show. Jason spent the week painting his house, thought it was a nice relaxing lead oh. into this round at Winter. Oh, Lounds! Oh, look at it. But that was well held by Jace the Face. That was. Uh, the Lounds, a big hit in the yeah, rear guard. That was a good whack, wasn't it? So now Valvoline Card drops back to second. He's under attack now for Paul Radisich. Good save, though, from Barbara. So Lounds is now standing on the top podium spot. I think a Barguana, tremendous battle for round eight of the Shell Championship Series. Paul Radisic, the fastest of the Fords at the moment. He's in the battle for the lead. Todd Kelly and the whole racing team Commodore behind this battle. Mark Scaife, yeah, up to fifth now. Rodney Forbes, a good effort also. Sixth position, Stephen Johnson to seventh. Tony Longhurst, eighth. Craig Baird, ninth. And Mark Larkham in the minor ten Ford. Much needed effort for him up to ten. There he is on the back of this freight train here at Mark Scaife. Just got through on Todd Kelly. That puts him up to fourth position. Before you know it, this man is going to be battling, I think, for a taste of the lead. Look at the amount of real estate he's made up after that terrible altercation in race one. There he is, Scaife. He's got the leaders within view. Incredible determination from Scaife here today. Let's have a look at this replay of that... Incident. Oh, on a this is coming up into Penrite turn. Oh, it's just... Yeah, that was a definite touch there. And Radisic wasn't quite able to capitalise. Barguan just gathered up. Let's have a look at what happened to Bow down at turn one. 
Oh, it's just up the inside the tander. And oh. Tander. No. Shut, shut the door. Good whack. I think that was an oil problem down there, Bats. No, I don't know. You can't... Uh, look it on the sea. You can't really see it, but you look at all the... Um, there is a bit of a sort of a dark grey look to it. Gee. <laughs> what a fender bender. <laughs> well, it was continuing during the break. Oh, it was during our Kelly, replay, though. I should say. Todd Kelly's gone off, and I'll tell you who went off with him very briefly was Mark Larkham and Rodney Forbes. Safety car is on the track. We've got a safety car out now. Let's have a look, another look at the replay. That's Todd. No, that's Kelly goes off. This is a bit further back in the field. Google Google Google. Google. Steve Reid, I think. Well, they're all coming off all sorts of different directions. They've had to pull the safety car out here. There's just too many cars lying around this racetrack. It's difficult trying to think who, who had gone off, wasn't it? There's so many of them. Well, some major dramas here. But this now tightens the field right up again. Done Scaife a big favourite. Yeah. Mark Scaife, he was just within view of that leading trio. Now he's right up on the bumper of Paul Radisic. Can he fight back and claim... Well, the Walker safety glory. car has certainly done plenty of K's here today. And at the moment, they're tucked up in behind him again. Lounds of Bargwana, Radisic, Scaife, Johnson and Walker stay with us. This one is far from over. And round over the championship. Fox Sports presents a must-see special on Australia's very own motorsport legend, Wayne Gardner, Mr. 100%. Join Warren Smith for an inside look at Wayne's new life, Grand Touring Car Racing in Japan. So I gotta go. See ya. From his haunted hotel. Yeah, my to his legion of loyal fans. <laughs> hey, hey, okay. okay. A fascinating look behind the scenes from free practice to race day. Mr. 100% premieres Wednesday night, 8.30, Fox Sports. with us wherever you're watching right around Australia or through TV1 in New Zealand. If you've just joined us, Craig Lowndes has suffered a stop-go penalty for that incident with Jason Barguana. He's just rejoined the circuit moments ago and that has put him well down the order. 25th position in fact, Barguana could be on course to repeat what he did here last year in terms of at least a race victory. The kid is on fire. Barguana a 124.99. Well, Barguana, if he wins this race... He is going to win the day. Incredible, consistent performance. Last year he did it by taking pole and winning three heats, but by the unbelievable turn of events here this afternoon, the battle for survival for the nuggety 28-year-old will just bring top rewards once again. What an extraordinary effort by the young man from New South Wales, now lives in Victoria. Jason Barguana carrying our in-car camera. There's his driver profile. Started in... Formula V's worked his way up, and he really has done it tough, Bargwana. Ran Formula Ford and Formula Holden on a shoestring budget. Got into this team purely on merit. And hasn't he been a wonderful performer for Gary Rogers Motorsport over the years? Well, he's doing it here at the home test track. Jason Bargwana, Paul Radisic in pursuit, but he's got plenty of speed in the Valvoline Cummins machine. Yeah, it looks like uh, Barks has got it under control. He's... Uh... Lap time-wise, as soon as Radish hits out, ups the pace a bit, Barwana goes a little bit quicker, so uh, it looks, uh, looks like he's got it under control. This is quite a big surprise for the Stone Brothers Racing Team. They qualified quite badly, these two, I must say. Both Beard and Longhurst didn't have a good time in terms of qualifying, but they have clawed their way up through the field in these cars, which are so well-engineered as Beard gets up on two wheels. At the moment, Beard sits, it sits in fifth position, Tony Longhurst in the Caltex Haviland Ford in fourth. Stephen Johnson just in behind Beard in sixth position. Jason Barguana at the moment leads the way at Winton and on course, providing nothing goes wrong for the youngster to take out this round. And don't forget, of course, if you want to check all the results in terms of V8 Supercar Racing, Championship Point Scores, Race Reports and much, much more, go to the official site, V8 Supercar.
So tremendous battles right up down through the field. As I say before, this battle between Seaton and Tanda, they're skiving their way through the field. They're right battling for the lead of the top 20. But believe it or not, the way these points are falling at the moment, they're battling for the last position on the podium. I think Bob uh, Warner may have made a bit of a mistake last lap because Wanisic is right up in his back side. So. Right this afternoon, Jason Bogwana in the Valvoline Cummins Commodore, Paul Radisich in second. This is further back in the pack. This is the battle I was talking about. Glenn Seaton and Garth Tanner both coming to grief. And here's Craig Lowndes after his stop go penalty joining in for the fight. Right back central in this afternoon. Yeah, it's such a change of events in the space of one race. There he is, the defending Shell Series champion who was certainly looking good to really get right back into the thick of things in terms of the championship points for that stop go it's going to have been quite a, a costly thing for him up in front of them anthony track here rodney forbes this second and tander it's been a consistent run too from paul radisich and the shell board is currently second in this race and he's a good chance for a podium spot this afternoon as well so that's going to add some variety to the podium paul radisich been out of luck so far this year. This could be his first podium in the year 2000. Four laps remaining for our race leader. He's on board with Glenn Seaton. And would he be kicking himself? I'm pretty sure there must have been something slippery on the track when he went off. There were all sorts of cars got to grief after him. But he's managed to gather it all up and get back into the battle. The be clear and simple telemetry takes you for a ride around Winton. Road speed on the left-hand side of the screen. Oh, yes. uh, That's your road speed on the left-hand side of the screen. Engine revolutions on the right. Brake applications in the middle. And there's your gear selection as well. So seat very physical. As he muscles this 1,350 kilogram V8 Falcon around the tight twists and turns of winter. Fighting back in this championship. Second in the order. Coming into this round behind Mark Scaife. And looking poised for the top spot until drama struck in race three. Scaife, of course, at the moment. The gap, which was around about 158 points heading into today's round, is now reduced to 126 if things stay the way that they are. So Scaife is catchable in this championship by no means. is wrapped up yet as Russell moves down the inside on Neil Crompton. Stephen Johnson, so Russell has now moved up to 7th position. He's been struggling all weekend, trying to get the power down of these slower corners. The car just not giving him the traction that he wants. And if your car is even 1% off from this level of competition, it's going to cost you a lot of time. So it's been a battle with the car as much as the opposition this weekend. But even his strongest performance so far is up to 8th in heat 3. This is Barguana. The walker in car shows you the way out of the back of the Valvoline Cummins Commodore. And as Barry mentioned, that gap has closed. Yeah, it just looks like um, Barks is quicker on the quick stuff and on the slow bits over the back of the circuit, um, Radisic makes up a lot of ground. Gary Rogers Motorsport has just about cut their own groove around this place. It's the local test track. It has been for several years. So you'd expect that the Valvoline Cummins operation will be strong here. They're certainly delivering two laps remaining for our race leader, Jason Barguana. Well on the way to repeating the result he earned here last year. Maybe not quite so spectacularly dominant. But an overall win is an overall win whichever way they come. Craig Lowndes is continuing to move through the field. Has moved up to 19th position. Has, has now gone past Garth Tander and heading out after Glenn Seaton who sits in 18th. But boy, oh boy, there's some names in this field that as you can see on the bottom of your screen there that have really been quite surprising. Paul Romano has moved up to 14th. A storming drive from him. They've got a new Kiwi engine builder giving them a bit of a hand. And the car sounds like a NASCAR here this weekend. Got a very unique sound. Lark up to 12th, which is great for the minor 10 driver. Rick Bates, who's made his return to V8 supercar racing here this oh! weekend. He's up to 24th. Look at this. The rat on the attack here at Winton. As we count down towards the finish of round eight of the championship. If uh, Bargwa, if um, Branisic can get right up behind Bargwa into the, the uh, right hander after 
at the end of this straight here in front of our commentary box and be really, really close. I reckon he's got a chance of getting bars over on the slow section over the back. Currently six forwards in the top ten. He's already second on the podium at the moment, Radisic. It's be a good, strong result for the Shell team. It's been by their own admission having a difficult year. There's some long faces down in that pit this weekend. They have not had a good run at all. This would be an immense confidence boost for Dean Orr, Dick Johnson and the entire team down there. Important. Look, at, look at this, this an important points boost to Paul Radisic currently fifth in the championship with less than three kilometres remaining. The final lap of Winter Motor Raceway, can Paul Radisic do it? That's the closest he's been in that section there, he makes a lot of ground up in the last, the next left round here. Through the board to the sweep out the back. Yep, we'll keep an eye on him. Now watch here. Radisic is quick through there, isn't he? Yeah, really, really, and when he comes... Fortunately for Barguana. Officials have deemed that flapping rear bodywork not to be too much yeah. of a danger. It would have been a tragedy if he got black flagged, had to get it come into the pitch to get it removed. So he's hanging on by his fingernails under maximum pressure from two times World Cup touring car champion Paul Radisic. Right, he's really having a very competitive day at winter. Yeah, there's really nowhere else now unless there's I don't think there's any chance now. Well, this is a much needed motivational boost. For Jason Barguana, his best effort so far this year, a second place in the opening race of the GMC 400 and a third at the Clipsal 500 in race two. But Barguana at the moment, this is the last corner, Radisic the last roll of the dice. Barguana heading for the start-finish line. And Barguana, a marvellous performance. He survives the battle at Winton. Barguana takes victory and the round. Radisic second. who's such an emotional character. Look at him. Well done. Winton is home turf for Jason Barguana. He has stamped his name on this place in V8 supercar terms, no doubt about it. That's good, because he's had a really rough time this year, and uh, it's nice when people, uh, you know, he's trying really hard, and um, it's all come together for him. That's good. Even though he's had a bad year, you know, he's always stayed happy, and that's kind of nice. Let's recap them for you. Barguana wins the race and the round. Radisic home second, Mark Scaife. That is a sensational performance. Recovering after a dismal day for third in the final race. Longhurst, Baird, Johnson, Ingle, and Neil Crompton complete the top eight in this astounding third race of the day. McLean Morris, Paul Wheel, Port Mark Larkin for getting up to 12th. That is a great effort as well. And it's been a great day's racing here indeed at Winton. Let's go to the podium, Mark Osler. Well, Mark Scaife's incredible run of wins and podium finishes came to an end at Winton Motor Raceway, but a great fight back by our championship leader. What it has done, maybe disappointed the Holden Racing Team fans, but it really has tightened up the championship. In third place today, it's been quite a varied podium, you've got to admit. He looked like he was heading for the top spot, but a bit of oil on that corner in the last race cost him dearly. Put your hands together for Glenn Seaton. Wow. Good to see you back up here, mate. It's, uh, it's been a bit of a struggle the last couple of years, hasn't it? But, um, geez, that oil, what a costly mistake. Yeah, it was really. It uh, brought, uh, I think it was three of us undone, actually. And um, it is disappointing because I thought this was our day. And... Uh, I was looking forward to taking that $10,000 off Jeff Pilates, the president of Ford, but uh, today's not the day and hopefully Oran Park will be. Oran Park in the past has been great for us, but uh, thanks to the boys because uh, they did a sensational job. The car was on the pace this weekend and it uh, really set the pace, but uh, uh, one of those things, it's uh, what you call it, is motor racing and those things happen. That's the way it goes. Put your hands together, folks, anyway. Great effort. The Ford Tickford driver. And for the first time since Barber Gallo last year, we've got two Fords on the podium. It's quite an extraordinary afternoon. Put your hands together. Second time in the Shell Championship Series is on the podium. Paul Radisic. Congratulations. Good to see you back up here. You said the car wasn't right through our qualifying, but it just shows if you hang in there, you can get a result. Yeah, it sure is. And uh, you've got to keep at it. And uh, big thanks to, to the guys, DJ, our team. We worked hard. To, uh, to improve the car, and, and we surely did. And, uh, you know, I know Glenn's chasing the 10 grand, but so am I. And uh, we're going to make it hard for him. So, uh, you know, watch out for the next rounds. I feel we're, we're making great progress. And, uh, you know, it's, I think this is going to say about Barguana because, uh, man, is he, this must be his lucky track or what, but um, he drove extremely well.
Put your hands together, folks. The rat is back. And there should be some more action from the Flying Kiwi at Oran Park. OK, now it's my pleasure to call on Ross Brody, the motorsport manager for Shell, the sponsor of this wonderful series. Second time in two years, our winner, Jason Bargwana. Soak it up, son. It's a good feeling, isn't it? See, that's, that's a hard way to do it. Last year you were totally dominant. This year you came through from the back, but uh, you got my microphone called. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Clumsy stuff, isn't it? You had to come through from the back. Uh, great result. Yeah, from the back. It wasn't that far back. Well, Jeez, give me a break. Not, um, not, from, not from pole position like last year, though. No, nah, Mark, look, that was fantastic. I mean, a great credit to the team, um, to Gary and all the boys. Uh, Greg's been working overtime on the car, and, and look, without the whole Valvoline and Cummins team, we wouldn't have been there. But, yeah, qualified ninth, and who'd have thought we'd be standing here with a trophy? All right. Now, can you continue this form at Oran Park? That's been a very happy hunting ground for Holton Racing Team. I think everyone's expecting them to be right back on the pace there. Yeah, well, um, you asked me this question last year, and I think I qualified 17th or something, so I'm not even going to answer that question, but thank God I was driving to Holden today, and especially the Valvoline Cummins one. I mean, um, you know, we're up on the podium again, and, and go the Holdens. We go the Holdens. Put your hands together, folks. Jason Bargwana, the winner of round eight of the Shell Championship Series. Eight rounds down, and here is the revised championship score. Scaife still on top, but the gap has narrowed. 120 points now to Seaton. Garth Tan is sitting in third there. A couple of other movers for you. Greg Murphy now up into sixth position, and Russell Ingle has moved from sixth to seventh. On behalf of all of our team here, Barry Sheen, Mark Osler, and our guest commentator today, Larry Perkins, that's bye for now.